Okay, there it is. Click add to stage. Okay, I just added to stage. Oh God. Okay, now I'm live on um, YouTube. And uh, hey, Rebecca, what is happening? I don't know what's happening. I do not know. You ask a very good question. Why am I not singing? Look for the silver lining whene'er a cloud appears in the blue. Where oh boy, this is this is this has been very agitating. Look for I can't I'm trying to look for the silver lining. It's, I don't think it's happening. All right, movement.vote. The Movement Voter Project. Check them out. It's it's chaotic. It's a mess. All right. What did I want to say? Um, you know how sometimes people say um, if there's they want to apologize for any inconvenience. Um, boy, I really can't. I don't know if I can re. re I don't know if I can reload here. I'm trying to reload. I got completely. It fucked me up. It fucked me up. I had technical, technical. Look for the silver lining when. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you for the encouraging words. You got this. You got this. You can do it. You got this. You can do it. Come on. Don't fuck up. Stop. I'm hearing the uh, the Rocky song playing in the background. The one from uh, from the uh, 1983, 84. Was that Rocky Three? The Eye of the Tiger. By the way, I'm wearing my uh, I'm wearing a pita T-shirt tonight. It says, "If it's not your mother, it's not your milk." Si no es tu mamá, no es tu leche. Think about it. And even if it is your mother, it's still not your milk. Think about that. If it's not your mother, it's not your milk. That's a vegan kind of a vegan credo. You can apply it to all kinds of things. Oh boy. All of the preparation. So when someone says to you, you know, if we apologize for any inconvenience, the any is really misplaced. There should not be an any in that phrase. We apologize for the inconvenience. That's taking responsibility. We apologize for the inconvenience. And the, the the implication is that it's it's a it's an inconvenience that we have caused. We apologize for the inconvenience. Goes without saying that we have caused. Instead, people have started to say, we apologize for any inconvenience. Any inconvenience? That's, that's really not taking responsibility. Any inconvenience? Is there any inconvenience? Any po if, there's any in if there's possibly any inconvenience... We're not saying there is, but if there is, we, we take responsibility. Just say, just say, yes, David, I know it's working. Hey, Rafi, you, you, you arrived just in time when everything started working. Boy, it was a fucking mess earlier. We had technical, um, any without this doesn't work. Anyway, we apologize for any, yeah, we apologize for this. Wait, Leslie, you're saying I'm frozen now on Instagram? No, that's your Instagram. 
I'm not even going to believe it. All right. This is a, it's a shit show tonight. Maybe that's the name of the show. The shit show. All right. Let me see what else I was thinking of singing tonight. Oh boy. Um, I'm not mini tonight. That's right. I'm not mini tonight because Mary, what was, what was, um, what was happening? The reason it was mini last night was because I was doing StreamYard through my phone straight out into the world. StreamYard on my phone into the world. Therefore, it was mini. But right now, what's happening is I'm actually broadcasting from two things at once. You're watching my Instagram thing and then the StreamYard thing is happening on my computer and it's a, it's a totally separate thing. I will pay you back for those special magnifying glasses that you that you got. I appreciate you doing that. You know what I think is happening tonight? I think this is the revenge of the trees. I'm up here in Massachusetts and for the first time, I I had some people come by and remove some dead trees. There was a few dead trees that were standing. There was some dead trees that were leaning. There was a tree that in 2020, it was a dead tree. And I, because you remember back in the pandemic, you remember four years ago, how suddenly there was this yawning expanse of time that we all had on our hands. And it became a question of how to fill the time. What are we going to do? How are we going to live? How are we going to make meaning and make make a living and make how we're going to make sense of it all so one of the things that i did is i went out there with a little hand axe i went out in the woods with an axe but not like a big axe the kind that you should use to cut down a tree i had a just a little a little axe that was about a you know like about a foot long and i just i used this little axe to cut down a tree and it took forever <laughs> it was a good workout and then i think it gave me a little recurrence of my lateral epicondylitis which is the fancy word for tennis elbow um <laughs> yawning expanse of time yeah so the chopping i had to go lefty a little bit anyway for now and and then i what i did that i was proud of you know you watch like uh the construction of a beaver dam on YouTube. And you see the beavers, they, they decide exactly where to chew and when to chew so that the tree will fall exactly where you want it to fall. So those are little mammals. Aren't they mammals? Yeah, they're mammals. There's some special kind of mammal. Um, but I figure, you know, I have I share some genes with that species. So I, what I was able to do in, in an atavistic connection to my beaver genes. Um, I was able with that little ax to, I was proud of myself. I was able to get it to fall parallel to the driveway. And then tonight, um, tonight everything is falling apart. And I, I think it's the revenge. I think it's the revenge of the, um, oh God. I think it's the revenge of the trees. Even as I'm talking about it, the trees were taken away. Wow. This is, things are coming apart. Coming apart at the seams. All right. It all began with my complaining about the, um, about the salt. I think I was cursed tonight. All right. I, I really don't know how to proceed after that. I think I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to abort. I'm going to, I am, I think I'm going to abort. Is abortion legal on YouTube? Because I'm going to abort this. All right, I won't abort. 
Jesus, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Thank you, Mary. I apologize for any inconvenience. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm going to sing something. Maybe that'll help. Let's see what's on page 153. I um. Oh, by the way, Texas. Yes, thank you, Texas. Thank you for um for tuning in. Okay, I'm not going to abort. Oh, fuck that song. No. Um, okay, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to keep searching for it. I'm reminded of the time I stepped onto stage. My very first solo singing gig in, in the opera was in, um, in Sweden. I went to Sweden to sing the magic flute in uh, March of 1998. And I stepped onto stage. I didn't have any rehearsals. I flew. I it was a replacement for someone. I flew over and I... So I, I had never rehearsed on the set. It turned out that there was a two by four across the across the threshold. So when I stepped onto stage for my first entrance, I stumbled. Um, I didn't hit the hit the hit the hit the stage. Uh, I didn't fall, but it was boy, that was rough. And I thought, you know what? I'm going. Uh, I, I think I talked about this. I decided I'm just getting back on the. I'm, I was backstage sweating and uh trying to figure out this is while the show was going on i had about 12 14 performances over the course of a few weeks and this was performance number one and i was thinking i had just arrived that morning got a little bit of sleep and went right to the theater for the show and i decided i'm just going to uh i was backstage the show was happening and i thought okay i'm just going to leave the theater and get in a taxi and go to the airport because this is just go, going so badly i was having a because i was having an anxiety attack and um it was it was really ho horrific and i was able to resist i was just oh god it was so uh anxiety producing but I didn't, and then the show the show came together. Uh, um, so, there was a there was a. Uh, we had a the chorus. A lot of the singers in the chorus were from um, from Poland, and the orchestra was from Hungary. I could have that backwards, but some a lot of the other people in the show were from Hungary and Poland. I was the one gringo. I flew over there for that show. And there was a um, there was a Hungarian woman in the I think she was in the orchestra. She was very flirtatious. Um, I was twenty seven at the time or so. I was a youngster, and uh, she was being very flirtatious and uh, kind of um, kind of pushy. <laughs> And I didn't deal with it very well. I just sort of, I, you know, I, I didn't know. I didn't, you know. Anyway, no, it didn't, nothing, nothing transpired. Um, but there was moments of sort of embarrassment and discomfort. And I did learn the phrase, uh, um, seretlek in Hungarian, seretlek, which means I love you in Hungarian. And I think... Um, I think that I had a dream, it must have been last night or today, where I was in, I encountered some Hungarian people and somehow I broke out that one little bit of vocabulary I had. I don't know. Anyway, the magic flute. <sighs> oh, God. 
all I can think now is, David, this is your, this is your fault, because I had this little this little gemütli little audience, and now the hubris of beaming this onto YouTube and creating a whole thing, and then suddenly my the ukulele is flying and things are breaking. No, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. That's what, as I pointed out before, that's what all the, all the movie therapists end up saying. It's not your fault. Oh, Jesus. Now we have to tune this thing again. <laughs> now it's, eh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, Applebaum, it's the apple tree. Nice to see you. I left my heart in San Francisco. Mary says, we're having a great time. You're a sweetheart. Thank you very much. Um, that's what's important. We learned this from Shalyapin. If you read, I don't understand this, by the way. There's the autobiography of Malcolm X by Aldous, by, no, not Aldous Huxley, by um, hey, Al, uh, Alex Haley. Alex Haley, is that the guy who wrote Roots? The autobiography of Malcolm X by Alex Haley. And then there's the autobiography of Shalyapin, the Russian singer. The autobiography of Shalyapin by Gorky. I don't understand how that works. Oh, what did I say? Yeah, Alex Haley, yeah. I don't understand how you have an autobiography by someone else. I guess what that means is that the subject of the autobiography sat there yapping to the writer, and then the writer wrote it down. So it, it should be with, by so-and-so, with. Anyway, um, I don't know why I was talking about that. I'm in a haze, people. I'm in a haze tonight. Um, I left my heart. Ode, Odai Megadesh. Thanks, Mom. You wrote something, I guess, in Hungarian. I don't know what it means. I know we know Egre Shegede, which is L'chaim and Salut, but I don't know what that means. Hey, Heather. Okay, here we go. Was that Shalyapin's son in Moonstruck? Oh, Harry. Hey, was it? Oh. I know who you're talking about. No, that's an acting teacher. I actually did did um, I did class. I did an acting class with him at HB Studios. That guy, he's the guy from Preetzi's Honor. Oh, my mom is saying, "Yep, that is him." Okay, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, I left my heart in San Francisco, high on a hill. It calls to me to be where little cable cars. You know what? I was talking the other day about how this guy in that song Avalon is is remembering the town where he or the place where he fell in love, and how that's kind of bizarre. Like you should just be thinking about the person you fell in love with. Um. But here's another song where the, the person is just really fixated on the city where they left their heart. I left my heart. We're going to get through this, people. Thank you for lifting me up. I left my heart. In San Francisco, 
High on a hill, it calls to me to be where little cable cars climb halfway to the stars. The morning fog may chill the air, I don't care. My love waits there in San Francisco above the blue and windy sea. When I come home to you, San Francisco, your golden sun will shine for me. Boing. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what that actor's name was. Does anyone remember what that guy's name was, that actor? It was a while ago. Uh, thank you, Harry. You're very, you're very kind. Um, so I took two acting classes. Hey, Rafi, thank you. Thanks for hanging in. I took two acting classes. Thank you, mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I took two acting classes at HB studios, which is this place down on like Methune street, I think down in the West village. Um, and, um, one of them was with this actor who played the dad on the Cosby show. He played, you know, Cosby's dad, that actor. I did a class with him. And then I did a class with, um, with the guy who we were just talking about from Moonstruck, who, uh, who was also the, uh, have another cookie, the have another cookie guy from Preetzee's Honor. I can't remember either of their names. So, but they were, I think they were good classes. I remember the um, er Earl, was that his name? Earl Hyman? Is that one of those guys? Was that his name? Anyway, the one from, from the Cosby show, I remember he said after I did a scene, he said, get your reality, get your reality. There was something in the way he said it or the suggestion that uh, the uh, this key element of the stuff around you on stage, your costume, your, your, your props, your, the other people getting your, get your reality. I like that phrase. Well, hello, Ed. Marro Rodriguez da Silva. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Oh, thank you. Anyone who's watching this, thank you. This is a new iteration of an existing show. I sent out a thing today to tell people what was happening, which is that I've been doing this show since July 14th, every single night. The show began as a chat show during the SAG after strike. The actors went on strike and I started interviewing fellow actors and fellow union members and other people in the entertainment business every night on Instagram live um, for the duration of the strike. And then when the strike ended, I decided I would just continue. Um, and the show morphed into more of just a solo thing. I started having fewer and fewer guests. And um, so, you know what? Leslie, I appreciate that, but that all caps suggestion is is um, it's like telling someone to relax, which is what my my mom did earlier in the show. She said, "Chill out." Telling someone to chill out is guaranteed to get the opposite result, and telling someone to stop thinking is similarly anyway that's just 
There you go. Do you find film TV coaches continually ask you to lessen your vocal delivery? Oh, yeah, Harry, I know what you're talking about. I did have a thing when I came back from a singing job and went right to a TV job where I was definitely talking way too loud. So, yeah. But no, I think I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, adjusting adjusting the volume. All right, what am I doing? What is going on? I don't know. No, no apology necessary. I appreciate the support, and I appreciate... Um, this is this has become this has become a very weird dynamic here. Um, it's become a weird dynamic where um, it's like um, what is this like? It's like uh, it's like an intervention. Thank you for intervening, everybody, in my uh, in my moment of need. Here's a song that I won't be singing. It's called "Thank You, Dawn." Um, here's a song that I won't be uh, singing tonight. It's called Princess Pupuli Has Plenty Papaya. <laughs> and she loves to give it away. Oh, okay. It's that kind of song. 1937. Princess Pupuli Has Plenty Papaya. And she loves to give it away. Uh, that's for another night. Um, all is well. Leslie, I love you. I love you. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. My, my instinct was, you know, stuff is going awry. Stuff is going amiss. Um, so just abort. Abort. It's, it's legal. It's legal to abort. Um, but thank you for uh, your encouragement. I did not abort. But here's part of why I was thinking of aborting. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking um, this, right, Don? I'm thinking this is new and I just invited like 3,000 people on my mailing list to watch this on YouTube tonight. So I'm thinking, so I, you know, there's expectations, there's pressure and um, and then things start going awry. So that's kind of a bummer. But then I thought, you know what? The origins of this show, my whole approach to this show, and the the germ of it was, I'm going to make this as simple as possible. And Instagram Live was the simplest. It limits the audience, but it's simple. It's just push a button and go. So last night, so taking a leap into the unknown of this stream yard and getting it going out there on YouTube and stuff, Last night, it was like I had that experience sometimes when you go back to a sport after you haven't done it in a while. That first time back, everything is going in. All the strokes feel right. Everything works. And then the second day, it all, it all falls apart. So this was like um, this was like a, a little bit of a mess. But anyway, that's it. But So I'm going to leave this up, and there it is. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow night. I'm going to work on this technical thing a little bit beforehand, which I did today, but I'm also going to start, I'll probably start the show a little early just so that by nine, hopefully it's going so that by nine, it's going smoothly. Yes. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mary. Thanks everybody. So yes, it will go more smoothly. And if, you know, worst case scenario, some of tonight's show ends up in the blooper reel. It ends up in the blooper reel and uh, lives on for eternity. Oh, let me do a little plug. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe. Share it. If you like the show, share it. Tell people about it. And also, this is my other thing. This is a, a book. And the... It, there's a mockumentary of the same title. Today is now is a mockumentary and it's a book that I wrote. It's a satirical self-help book. Uh, my character's name is Dr. Benjamin and uh, the movie, the movie's done and it's, uh, it's been entered in some film festivals. So we're waiting to hear. Oh, thank you, Dawn. You got the book. That's very sweet of you. So please get the book. It's guaranteed to change your life. 
by seven dollars if you get the paperback but get the get the hardcover because it feels better um and there's one other thing i wanted to plug oh poultry oh poultry page 21 okay i'll read poultry page 21 um thanks weird adults but before that i want to plug this there's a show that i'm involved in it's called a blind play a blind play it's a it's like a radio drama like an old-time radio show where it's you know it's just a radio drama it's theater on the radio and um it's from this this company mao mao house mao house productions in atlanta my friend michael mao is the creator the writer the producer and in this season of a blind play um i have a few roles in a few of the episodes so it's all dropping as they say on a april 4th so at the end of this week please look for that a blind play podcast okay here's page 21 of today is now today is now by dr samuel benjamin my alter ego okay poultry many people are unaware that chickens and turkeys can fly really i've seen it now ask yourself, why would a chicken who is endowed with the power of flight walk across a road when he can fly? Is it because he has heard he can't fly so often that he hasn't even tried? How often do we underestimate our own innate abilities and choose a path that conforms to our limiting conception of ourselves instead of spreading our wings and soaring like the transcendent creatures we are? What a shame, huh? Also, you needn't always look both ways before making a decision, before moving towards your destiny. Sometimes tis better to leap without looking. Looking can raise questions, and questions can beget doubt, which can act as quicksand. How will you know at any given moment if you should look or not? Look inside and ask yourself, what's in there? A vast library, a custom-tailored database, open all hours, available whenever you need to know. NB, if you're crossing an actual street, always look. It's funny, I wrote this a couple of years ago, and I, I thought I was going another direction with the joke. It says, uh, now ask yourself, why would a chicken who's endowed with the power of flight walk across a road when he can fly? And I thought I was going to, I thought my joke was going to be, because if he flew, then he wouldn't have ended up in the joke. But that's, that's not a, that's, that's the fun of reading your own thing a few years later. All right. Okay. So there's a nice message. Okay. People sleep well. Thanks for tuning in. I'm here every night. Always. I'll be seeing you always with a love that's true. Always, always, always. Okay. Sleep well.